I'm going to talk to you this morning about blockchain and ICBF and I suppose where we went about trying to understand blockchain or trying to find a project that would allow us to, to develop some sort of, and I'm going to talk about this proof of concept as to how do we find, um, where do we start, how do, how do we go about it and the exercise that we went through in a particular project that we, we looked at. Um, and again, I probably need to apologize. I know this is a Vista Mills conference, but Brendan opened the door about talking about beef. So actually I'm gonna continue the trend and uh, continue to talk about beef as well and the beef industry. So I think hopefully it'll be a nice, um, it'll be a nice uh, add on to where Brendan has started. Um, so rather than, and I'll have upset the, the dairy industry. Um, so just to give you a little bit, I, I talk a little bit about ICBF and, and again, try and put in context where we were at and, and how, we, how we looked at the industry and how we looked at uh, blockchain as, as a technology. And um, so for a lot of people attending, I know you'll be very familiar with ICBF, um, but for others, just to give a little bit of background, um, ICBF was established in 2002 as a non-for-profit uh, cooperative of some 30 uh, breed organizations, that would be breed societies, AI companies, milk recording organizations, and the farmer bodies representing the farmers. So it's just to give you a context of, of who we are. Um, and again, why were we established? I suppose we were established with the aim of maximizing dairy and beef farm profitability and sustainability um, through a means of improving genetics and greater data integration. Um, and that's where look, we're looking at the, the next genera a generation of animal being more environmentally and economically sustainable than the last. And that's the challenge. Um, and it's about do doing that through collaboration, cooperation, uh, partnership, um, through genetics and big data solutions. So it just gives you a context of where, where we sit. Um, to, to start the conversation, I suppose, I kind of, again, a lot of people will be familiar and Brendan has, has, has introduced this topic as well in the previous set of slides around the, the industry and, and what is the overview. And I just, again, want to give a very brief kind of set the scene of the industry um, uh, where we're involved. And I'm conscious, as I say, we have a lot of people on today who will be a lot more knowledgeable than I. So please do forgive me as we, as we go through this. Um, <clears throat> again, in terms of, of the industry across the, the dairy and beef, um, in terms of just, just sheer numbers and, uh, from a dairy point of view of 1.5 million dairy animals in 17,000 odd herds of breeding, uh, nine, just short of a million beef cows are across 66,000 herds. But the average herd sizes are obviously quite different um, in terms of being um, 80 cows versus 14 cows. And then the, the interesting part here, and I think, I think this is where Um, Carl, I oh, think have you you've put yourself on mute there. Oh, my apologies. I'm not sure how that happened. <laughs> no problem. You might want to just rewind a little bit. <laughs> oh, sugar. So um, do you, do we know where I was at? Um, my apologies, Sharon. Where no. had I... just, you were just introducing the beef industry, Carl. Oh, the beef industry. Um, so I, I can move from here, Johnny, if I'm, I'm, I'm happy enough, am I? Uh, Randa. I beg your pardon, Donna. Your slides are no longer visible. Oh, of course, it's off with Zoom has managed to crash this morning. Sorry, guys, my humblest apologies. It has managed to blow up everything. And um, that's not ideal. So let's just try this again. Yeah, if you're and if you're having issues, um, just mention it to Guillaume and he'll be able to Okay, my sure apologies, guys. Okay, perfect. Are, yeah, we, are we back? We, 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 are we back in? Go on yeah. to the next, next slide. Next slide, Carol. I'd say. Oh, no, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. No, no. Down I'll, 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 I'll try to keep going from here. I say again, um, sorry, folks. Uh, not no problem. Sure what, um, what is going on there? Um, so, 
I'll, I'll keep going, as I say, in terms of the industry, um, like I'm very conscious we've lots of people here who, who know an awful lot about this, much more so than I, so I apologise, as I say, just to give you a little bit of the background. I mean, to be fair, Brendan has introduced this already, so I think we're, um, we're pretty good in terms of where it's at. I suppose the point I was trying to get at here was in terms of the, um, the industry and from, from a farmer's point of view, again, we're looking at... Um, the majority of, of product uh, being exported and how again can we look at blockchain as as a mechanism by which um, it allows the, the farmer to have that connectivity out um, as, as the product leaves and is there an opportunity there and that was something that we looked at as, as, as part of the background when we looked at blockchain as a technology and seeing did it act as, as a differentiating factor um, for us um, to, to allow us to look at uh, you know something that we could use for, for that, um, that technology. Again, definitely get myself in trouble here, especially with Donna at this stage uh, in terms of um, this graph. But I just wanted to again put a little bit of the context for the industry and the breeding um, and genetic gain um, in in the industry. And you're looking here at two at, at on the graph. I'm really pushing my luck now if I start to put on color D. But um, from from a dairy point of view in the dairy industry, uh, the genetic gain um, kind of over over a number of years from the from 2006 uh, and EBI. Um, which is, is looking about 1.5 billion to the dairy industry over the period. And then on the beef side, which again, um, we're going to concentrate a little bit on today, um, over the last number of years, particularly from the introduction of the BDGP, which is about 100 million to the beef industry and projected, um, and hoping based on Donna's figures in 2030 to 600 million, and also looking at some sort of um, impact for, for carbon emissions, greenhouse gases, which we'll touch on later on, um, and how that, again, is something from, from a blockchain proof of concept that we looked at and how we might integrate it into the proof of concept. Again, a lot of people will be quite familiar with these slides, um, and, and this particular slide, um, if you've been dealing with ICBF previously, but I, what I wanted to discuss in just putting this slide forward was the nature of the fantastic partnership and the collaboration that exists in the industry currently and the ability for the industry to be able to share data and work together with that data to leverage the benefits for the greater industry. Um, and I suppose this is something that's, you know, it's, it's very much a unique model. And it's something that when, when we went and talked to different organizations worldwide in terms of blockchain and implementation and why they were implementing blockchain, they were really, uh, I suppose, amazed at the fact that within Ireland, you had this, this principle of, of, a, of, of a joined up system of a centralized database that was providing um, the ability to, to, to share data and to, to collaborate. And the fact that that was being done through uh, trusted sources, um, it was something that, that challenged the, the blockchain technology and what, why, and you no, know, don't ask the question a little bit earlier, you know, why, why do you need it if you have the, 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 the central data? Is, is blockchain just a, another implementation of a technology for the sake of implementing a technology? Um, so that's something that we've um, we we considered and we said we needed to look at and kind of led a lot of our our, our looking in terms of the blockchain project. Um, but for for people just to very briefly from from an ICBF point of view and and the database that it, that resides again as a, as an industry good database, everything from our the, the her books your your mint recording co ops the AI organizations. Department of Agriculture, particularly again, the farmers, the from a joggers point of view, the marks, the abattoirs, the vets, the researchers. It's it's that collaboration and that working together um, and being able to have work together on, on the data and seeing where it is. So it's something that we'll come back to again, I think, a little bit later on, because I've left a blank in here, and it's one that I want to talk about when we when we move towards looking at well, how could blockchain help and how do we look at implementing blockchain? Um, <clears throat> Again, very briefly, just to give you a little bit of the background to the technology and in terms of where, where we come from, um, so you can understand why we're looking and where we were looking at it. Um, we do operate um, to Oracle Exadata systems, which are an engineered system for the operation of the centralized database. Um, both data centers are, are connected internally uh, on a private fiber uh, about a kilometer apart. Um, and the Exadata databases are the backbone of, of the ICBF database. And you have, you know, you have thousands of farmers, hundreds of organizations, industry partners, um, as we've seen in the previous slide, and they're, they're connecting and they're interacting with the database um, as, as a central joined up system. In terms of some level of compute as well from uh, when, when Donna and, and the geneticists um, want to go and crunch the numbers on, on some of that data, 
give you a flavor of where, where that, that kind of compute has gone over the last number of years, where we started with two gigs of RAM and 80 gigs of terabyte, or 80, gig, sorry, 80 gigs of hard disk, we're now up at six terabytes of, of RAM and 40 terabytes of SSD uh, for compute to, to crunch the numbers on this. Um, and then that's, you know, we have two servers that are running six terabytes of RAM each. So it gives you an idea again of volumes of data and, and the capacity that's being done currently and seeing again, is that something that we disperse into the, and can we use blockchain or are we, are we looking at different solutions? Um, just kind of a final setting the scene for you in terms of, of data and farming again. Um, and for, for some people um, who may not be familiar with the, the kind of the, the, the data sets um, that, that are used is particularly in the, in the, in the cattle breeding um, database um, from our you know, roughly 100,000 farmers with 6.5 6 million animals um, alive in, in, in any one time about 7.7 7 million movements a year. Um, and this is, Donna was referring to, well, we have it, there's a, the AIMS Department of Agriculture Centralized Database for managing all of that. So again, that's a, that's, that's a piece of technology that's there. It's a database that's there. The information is there already. Is that something that, again, how's blockchain, blockchain going to implement that or, or affect that? Or is that something that we, you know, we're going to use blockchain to enhance? And I suppose this is where we were trying to, to look at where does blockchain fit and how, how, how do we think we can make use of it? Um, again, if you look at whether that's animals that are slaughtered um, a year, about 2.2 million animals a year, um, as 2.4 million animals born. And again, the, the numbers will change year on year depending on, on, on the growth patterns, whether that's the, the BVD records or, um, and John touched on earlier when we started in terms of the um, the antibiotics and all uh, the different um, work that goes on there, bit recording. Um, an interesting one for us, and it was kind of, so a lot of work is what we're looking at in terms of the animal genotype. So we hit about 380,000 um, genotypes this year, um, which is in essence is the DNA sampling of an animal. So we have the actual DNA of an animal from a traceability, from a tracking point of view. Well, this, you know, we, we have the DNA of the actual animal. So can we trace that through the system? Is that of interest to us? Is that of use to us? Does blockchain allow us to do something interesting with that? Can we use that as a, as a mechanism to act as a differentiator again for the farmer? Um, and that's, that's you know, it's, it's something that was allowing us to, to start these conversations. In terms of um, the just the genotype as well, and again, just to give people a, a flavor for the, the, the volumes and the pieces of data. So sitting in the, in the database, in, in a relational database and rows and columns is these individual pieces of data relating to the, the DNA of the animal. So we're, we're, say, we're currently operating about 2 point, or sorry, 2.3 million genotypes in the database. Um, so that's 2.3 mil, million animals we have the DNA and we, from a traceability point of view. Um, and again, you know, maybe we only need a small piece of that data and maybe it's just the parentage SNPs. It, it will depend. And that's, again, I think gives an opportunity and, and food for thought as to where maybe this technology can take us. Um, so getting to the, I suppose, the, the meat of the subject and what, what this morning is all about is, is around blockchain. Um, and I wanted to try and give you a little bit of a, I suppose, Bring you on the journey that we went on um, back in in early 2019. Um, we were we were hearing about this, I suppose, academically. There's a, there was a lot of conversation. You you were hearing about blockchain. Everyone was talking about blockchain, and um, and it was it was a conversation. And it's and that's still there today. And different people will ha will have had more experience. And I think today today's uh, workshop will. I think give us all better understanding of what it is and help to us to answer the questions and see how we could apply it or make use of it um, in, in, in the particular scenarios that are relevant to us. But back in, in, in early 2019, when we were looking at this, again, we were completely, I suppose, lost in terms of where do you start? Um, you know, we were asking ourselves the questions, well, what is it actually? Everyone's talking about it. You know, you have to have blockchain. It's a new technology. It's, it's, and we've seen some of the statements and, that could be true, but when you're coming at a cold and you really don't know much about it and you don't know where to start, um, it can be quite daunting. So we were, you know, why should we use it? Um, but then 
can we afford not to be using it because it's 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 the cutting technology it's going to be the it's going to and as as the statement john had this morning it's going to you know it's going it's equivalent of the internet and um, so it's something we we have to be involved in we have to use we have to know about um and how do we then apply it to what we do was was a real question so technology for the sake of technology um is not going to be of much use to us but how, how do we actually take it make it practical make it usable give us give a benefit um and the other question we were finding was well okay we're reading bits here and there we're looking at the internet we're reading the academic papers and but is there anyone out there who can help us um and it's you know where where do we start um who can we connect with and there was a lot of those questions going on and that was that was i suppose that was a challenge for us um, and so what what we decided to do was we, we, we partnered with one of our, our technology partners who have an innovation lab and they, they were more on the, the technology side. They were looking at, okay, black, blockchain as a technology, what is it, uh, understanding that. And we were coming at it from, from an industry point of view, from a, a practical point of view, how might we use it? How, how are we gonna move forward with it? Uh, and that was, it was a nice partnership for us to be able to say, okay, can we, can we work together? So we did work with the innovation labs in, in version one to do that. Um, and this, this is the project, I suppose, as to what, what we did and, and, and where we went. So it was really to get an understanding of blockchain as a concept and as a technology, and to see how relevant is this um, to the Irish agri-industry, and probably more importantly is how relevant was it going to be to the industry in the future? Um, and in order to do that, we said we needed to identify some piece of a project um, that would allow us to be able to understand the technology, be able to achieve that understanding and that working knowledge in a short time frame, and also to be able to produce something that was tangible that everyone could discuss. Um, and, and that, I think, is one of the, the core features in terms of trying to understand any new technology is to take something that you can actually get your head around. Let's not solve all the world's problems in one go. It's to take that little one piece, build it and see, can we understand it? and do that in a short time frame so that it's, it's easy for everyone to get their heads around. So that was the approach we took. Um, and when we started, we said, okay, well, is there precedence out there at the moment? You know, what's happening? And again, once you start looking you, you and looking in, in specific areas, you will find, um, and again, whether that was in, you know, New Zealand beef and lamb, uh, whether that was the Wyoming beef chain that was that's out there or any myriad of, of papers and publications and discussions that people had um, that was around blockchain and it was it was really and it's and it is lots of lots of discussions and lots of really interesting um, and I think that's where again today we're we're looking at actual practical applications of it and, and hopefully putting it in context so we then approached it from the the principles of you know who will benefit um and by looking at that, that kind of helped us to figure out, well, what might be a practical project for us to, to work on? Um, so from a consumer point of view, we were saying, okay, it is interesting. Um, it's, you know, it's that whole idea of, and, and again, Brendan talked about this earlier, this visibility, this trust, this transparency from a consumer point of view, being able to have that informed purchasing decision. You know, it's the buy local, it's buy green, buy tasty. It's, it's in keeping with all that. So absolutely, this, this sounds great for the consumer um, because it takes a whole series of boxes for them. Um, from an industry point of view, we're saying, okay, it's, um, you know, there is, there is something here in terms of this idea of, you know, the enabling surgical like recall, it's, it's enhancing Ireland's, um, what is already a very uh, prominent agri image, um, you know, traceability, there is, there's a whole um, series of work that has been done over many years to give Ireland a very good image in terms of, and providing systems and, and services of traceability. And so it's, can this help us to, to take that on the next level? Um, and in terms from an ICBF point of view, it was, okay, it was in line with our, with our strategic goals, but also we were trying to see, could we actually use it to enhance some of our current programs that we were working on at the time? And we looked at two of our, our programs and projects that were ongoing. And we said, actually, do you know what? Blockchain here could add to these and give us an insight into something that might scale a lot bigger uh, while achieving from a consumer and from an industry and again bearing in mind we're, we're looking at this from from a farmer point of view as well so not to forget what brendan was saying saying earlier about it, 
it's the farmers is core to all of this. So we looked at it in terms of um, so a meat tasting, um, and I'm going to talk about the, the meat uh, eating quality project in a second, and also from a greenhouse gas. And so it's from a, a meat eating quality, it's it's the consumer and providing information to the consumer, but also much more importantly, getting that information back from the consumer. Um, and from a greenhouse gas emissions is obviously greenhouse gases has become much more of a, of a topic of discussion and an action point for the industry. And can we do something with consumer awareness um, to help them understand the industry and again, it benefit the industry and benefit the farmer. So talking very briefly about greenhouse gases. And again, I really will get myself in trouble because Donna will have, I've opened the door for lots and lots of questions on probably some of these are his, um, his slides that he had originally. So I, I really get myself in trouble. But very briefly, in terms of greenhouse gases, it's, it's a topic that's a conversation for all of us. It's, it's very important um, and it's becoming more and more important. If you look in terms of greenhouse gases and emissions in animals, um, cattle are one of the um, very high producers of it within the, the, the group of animals. And if you take about uh, agriculture, greenhouse gases emissions, it, globally, it's about 12%. The EU is 10%, but Ireland is 33%. Again, Probably no surprise there, given the um, we have um, the, the number of animals and our industry. Um, but there is an action plan there, and the Irish Irish Irish, Irish agriculture has a plan to drop from the the twenty million tons to the eighteen million uh, tons um, over a period of time. And part of the challenge is, if you think about it, there's lots of talk about how we do reduce it, and floating is oh, we just need to cut our national herd. Well, by cutting the national herd, that solves the emission problem. Yes, but that's probably not the most sustainable for the industry. And it's not really, you know, there are other options and it's about introducing that, that conversation. So BDGP is a prime example, again, in the beef industry was, was a state sustainability. It's about breeding more sustainable animals. So then and one of the projects um, that's been ongoing is, is a, a green breed project which has been looking at identifying uh, greenhouse gas emissions and the output that in, between different animals. And there's a 15 to 20% uh, variation between the outputs um, that, that animals will produce. So again, we're looking at it from a breeding point of view, can we breed more carbon efficient animals? If we can breed more carbon efficient animals, therefore they'll produce less carbon emissions. Maybe we don't need to go into the drastics of cutting the national herd. Similarly, by looking at things like altering the, uh, the slaughter profile, um, there's, a, there's an opportunity to reduce emissions there as well. But this, this principle of, oh, we just, cut, we, we just cut the national herd and we'll, we'll solve our problems. Bearing that in mind, we'll come back to it, you'll see where, it, where, the, um, where this becomes relevant in terms of blockchain, hopefully, and the consumer in a second. Just looking at it again and wh why cutting the national herd may not be such a good idea in terms of, if you look at beef uh, consumption worldwide, the trend is, is still on an upward trend. Um, and while looking at it in terms of, of Europe, we're aware it's, come, it's, it's become more and more of a topic of discussion and people are becoming much more conscious about, about meat eating and, and the, op the different options that are out there. Um, Europe has, has declined, but if we look at China, China has skyrocketed. So there is, there is a market there. There is, if, if we can look at it in terms of how can we breed more efficient animals um, and that allowing the farmer to, to continue to um, have a, a very sustainable um, industry. The MEQ, um, Meat Eating Quality, um, is the second project we've been working, uh, we're working with it. So the MTI partnership, again, it's a project around uh, meat eating quality. So, the principle here is, can you tell based on the breed and the DNA of the animal, if the steak you're about to eat will be juicy, tender, have flavor. Um, so unlike your bottle of Coke, when you go into a supermarket, every time you go and get a bottle of Coke, it's always going to taste the same. It's not quite as simple with a steak because obviously you're not quite sure what, what you're going to get when you go to the supermarket. So the, 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 what this has been about is producing a set of predictions to say the state, this based on the breed of this animal and the breeding, and the DNA, this animal will produce a, a tender, but not a juicy steak or a juicy um, and flavor steak. And based on that, we want, is that information useful to the consumer? Can that help again, the farmer to have better decision in the breeding of his animals to deliver um, better outcomes for the farmer when the consumer goes to buy that steak? So they were the two kind of areas we were working on and we're saying, okay, 
how could we take blockchain as a practical implementation and make use of it to help deliver something um, to the farmer? So the, the QR code here in the stake is something that we'll, we'll look at here now in a second. So going back to my, my conversation here earlier, and we talked about the centralized database and a little bit of the question of, well, why do we need blockchain if, if we're, we're already working in great collaboration and people are sharing data? So when we were looking at it, um, one of the areas that we, we, we certainly don't work with uh, in, in huge numbers is, is a consumer and supermarket connecting into the centralized database, logging into the database and doing that currently. So how do we, could we use blockchain as the mechanism by which the vehicle to allow us to, to interact with the consumer with certain pieces of information and maybe take information back as well. So our project that we, we designed, so we're saying, can we, can we build a, set, a, a blockchain to deliver something out to a consumer? And we want to deliver that out to the consumer on, well, we need to see what's the best, best way to do that. An app is probably the best way to do that. So one of the challenges we found then was, okay, what are the kind of pieces of information that we might want to put on a chain that would make it interesting for the consumer? Um, and or that allows them to, you know, to, to access the data. What we will have then is um, some mechanism um, by which, and I don't like, I'm getting an internet is unstable sign on my screen, but hopefully you can still hear me and I haven't lost you. Um, the app to scan a QR code, uh, the consumer gets information and the pieces of information, thank you, Michelle, and the pieces of information that um, we want to present out to them. So we said, what would be quite interesting is, again, the DNA from the animal. So the animal that make that the genesis uh, block of, of the chain. The DNA, that's just traceable, that's, that's immutable. We're not, it's not gonna change, we don't want it to change, we don't want it affected. It's the first thing we could put on the chain. Um, and that's, that, that was the first piece of information. So the animals that are being DNA tested through the Weather Scientific Lab, coming back to us as genotypes, we have in the database. The other information, again, and then Donna referenced it a little bit earlier here, was the, you know, the animal itself, the information relating to the birth of the animal. So that's the, the tag, the date of birth, the sex of, of that animal. The farmer provides information in terms of, well, you know, it's, and, and Brendan, it's, you know, is, there, is, is, is it a pedigree animal? What, what's the sire of the animal? There's information there, again, the, the calving ease, the, the different pieces that will make that, again, help to produce information that allow uh, us to calculate the, let's, in this particular case, the, the tenderness, the juiciness, or the flavor of the steak that they're going to scan. The, from an abattoir point of view, obviously, it's when the animal goes to slaughter, there's information that we need to, at, at that stage, it becomes quite relevant in terms of going to, to supermarkets. Um, and as part of the, the, uh, M, the MTI uh, project, we were actually taking animals that were going to slaughter that had been through all of these processes, and they were actually, the, the stakes, the individual stakes were getting barcoded um, for work that was being done in terms of research uh, at Chagas Ashdown or at Olus. Uh, for, for consumer testing and tasting. So the principle is the barcode was actually on the piece of meat as well, which we could link it back. So we could scan a barcode for a steak. And the principle was by scanning that barcode on the steak, we could find out information relating to, well, when was it slaughtered? What was it, you know, was it a pedigree? Had it a name? When was it born? What was its um, sex? What was its breed? And from the DNA, we were saying, well, we could actually have traced it right through um, from birth, and the DNA will also have confirmed things like its parentage, its sex, its breed, and so on. Now, part of the challenge with blockchain is you now need to, how, how do you get people to engage to put, put information on the chain? Um, and for us, we, what we didn't want to start to do, because again, if we started to try and have conversations with all the different parties, um, that would take time. It would take time to get everyone to try and how would we how would we encourage them to work with us to put something on the chain so what we did was we acted um ourselves as the as the source of the individual pieces of information because we had them in the central database in the first place so we again this was a proof of concept um so what we were able to do was we were able to write the pretend we we had our we wrote a piece of code at say pretending we were we were whether be scientific sending us the the genotype wrote a piece of code pretending we're the Department of Agriculture sending us the BERT notification data from AIM system. 
wrote a piece of code depending we're pretending we're the farmer and similarly for the abattoir so we acted as we, we, we made ourselves the independent pieces adding to the chain and ICBF adding to the chain as well. So that, that was the principle. So data came in to the chain. The idea then was that the consumer was able to access components of the chain um, by using the app. Um, and again, based on blockchain, you can decide, um, well, I want the consumer to be able to see pieces, only certain pieces from parts of the chain. Um, and then what was also critical for us was to be able to say, okay, the consumer has now got the stake. They've now sampled the stake. Can we get the feedback from them to say, yeah, absolutely, it was juicy, it was tender. You told me it was going to be juicy, but you know what? Actually, it was tender as well. You didn't tell me that. And take that in to allow it to come back into the, into the system so the likes of Dunn and, and, and all the genesis can go and do much more accurate calculations on to allow us to, to scale going forward. So how do we approach it? We took a proof of concept. We did this the agile methods kind of over six weeks, six, two week sprints and um, collaborative work looking at a uh, end user. And I'm conscious of my time. When you look at blockchain, we, there's been a little talk today about whether that's um, there was permissioned or permissionless. And um, what we were anxious to look at, we were anxious to look at, um, say, being able to control. Well, if pieces of information go on, who put something on the chain, you can decide, well, I want user A to be able to see that piece, but not user B and user C can see both. So we, we said, actually, from looking at what we wanted to do in these, this particular concept, we needed to be permissioned. We need to be able to control it. Um, so that allowed us to, um, to suggest it was, a, it was a hyperledger fabric. The next thing we looked at then is we said, OK, um, how, do we, how do we go through that? What, what technology do we use? And we said, OK, blockchain as a service, again, cloud, cloud as a service, this is where, where the vendors are there, they're, they're, they're providing you services. Um, can we do that rather than have to build everything from scratch? Again, proof of concept, something we want to get out quickly. We want to, we want to make it easy for ourselves. So looking at the different vendors, and we were looking at it in terms of reducing the costs, the actual how quick rapid development, reducing our risk, and, and this whole accelerated development. So to tick all of those boxes, you looked at, and there's vendors out there. And again, I know there's going to be a number of talks today on these, on the vendors and the different technologies and, and platforms that are available to you. We looked at this and again, obviously we have an Oracle centralized database, but one of the things we said was, um, let's pretend we, we have nothing. We have no technology basis. We're, we're agnostic in terms of technology, go and have a look. And as part of the project and um, colleague Dara Matthews is on the call today. So I'm sure Dara will answer any questions people have um, later on in relation to this. Um, but the, the pain and the suffering and, uh, that he went through over those those six uh, two week sprints or the six two week sprints, um, we looked at the different technologies and we actually started off with one particular vendor, which was the Amazon vendor, because it looked initially, um, you know, looked like a good good plan. Got into that uh, and fairly quickly we started to find we were we were struggling a little, and um, and we then went and had a look at at the Oracle. Um, blockchain application, which, and I have to be careful, I say it surprised us in terms of how easy it was to use, but maybe it shouldn't have been so surprising. So we ended up picking that as, as, our, as our platform to deliver um, our blockchain solution. In essence, and I've, I've kind of touched this on already, the idea of consumer from, we, we build a mobile app, they scan the QR code, the consumer then is able to access the, uh, the chain We've been adding to the chain via the, the different components, whether that was the farmer, the DNA lab, um, the Department of Agriculture, and the access has been controlled all within the, the, the platform that we have built. I know people moan now, at, 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 but I, I've gone, all I'm going to show is just to give you an, a sense of very much a lot of this is people kind of look at technology and say, oh, it's, it's going to be difficult to do. Um, this is just a couple of screenshots of the Oracle and um, the Hyperledger fabric based solution. It's, it's a nice UI. It was easy to create the network and the management of our smart contracts. Um, and it was, you know, it literally was a next, next, next process. And um, so just to show you that it, it literally is that idea. You have, um, you're, you're creating your, your instances, you're creating your, your information, you have your, your dashboards, all very easy to use. So again, it's a new technology, but it's, there shouldn't be a fear of that technology. Um, just to talk then a little bit about again, and I know we have we'll have people on who are um, 
you know, they're probably technologists and they'll, they'll know this in, in great detail. Um, but what I wanted to show again, don't want people getting concerned about pieces of code, but we, were, we, we had software developers who were involved in doing this. They didn't have to go and learn a whole series of new uh, methodologies and technologies. And it, they were able to transition relatively quickly. And I'll, I'll talk about that in the findings in a second, but it's pieces of code. So anyone who writes code will find, you know, there's if statements, there's tries, there's catches, it's exception handler. It, there's, it's, it's familiar, we'll put it that way. So look, whether that's um, doing the instantiation or invoking the query onto the ledger, or whether that was the creating the animal uh, in the system or writing information, they were just simple pieces of code. Uh, once we knew what we wanted to do, it was relatively simple to put that together. Um, you know, or whether we're, we're addi additional queries for the, for the consumer, again, relatively straightforward in terms of the pieces of code that were available to them. So what we ended up was in very, our very first iteration after, after the 12 weeks was, was a mobile app where you were able to uh, scan a code. And what we were able to present was you know, information relating to the animal, the MEQ calculation um, in terms of, well, you know, is it going to be, and we did that on a star rating of what well, it's going to be a five star animal, meaning it's going to be a, a very good or a one star um, in terms of the traceability, the, the pieces on the chain, uh, in terms of whether that was the DNA, when did that come in, what were the information, whether the animals, births, uh, movements, and so on. We, we've obviously evolved that a little bit further since in terms of um, we've, we've, we've evolved the app um, and we, we are using this for, for, a, for the MTI project in terms of some of the, the, the stakes and, and doing the, the, the consumer testing and feedback. Um, so again, very simply the, the barcode, the QR code gets scanned on the app and there's the, the history of what's been rated, the information in relation to the animal uh, and, and so on and so forth. So maybe just to bring it back so I don't go over time is the, I suppose our initial learnings from the POC was that um, blockchain is applicable to customers and there is, there is value add. There is still a lot of hype out there um, because it is an emerging technology. From a developer point of view and doing it, the language is, you know, there's no new language needed. And um, there is a learning curve in terms of, it's, it's a paradigm shift in terms of how you do it, but there's nothing new to learn. Uh, it's just a means of writing it in a slightly different way. And um, from the point of view of the, you know, if you think about software as a service, the Oracle solution we found in this particular scenario um, worked very, very well. It was quick and it was easy to use. Um, the hardest parts really was to find that real use case. What is the minimal viable network? And we, we actually made up our own viable network because we said we would create the, the pieces adding to the chain. Um, in terms of internationally, you'll see, and we've, we've seen this, it's, there's lots and lots of talks out there and you can go and you can, you can look these up and, and, and see what's, what's of interest to you. Um, I mean, we had the, the pleasure of speaking at a, at a number of different talks and being on the same um, stage as the likes of Retrace who are a, a global provider of um, fashion. Circular are a real interesting one. And I think Eustace is gonna probably speak about and reference them later on today in his talk in terms of, this is traceability. So Volvo cars and your electric, uh, your electric car and your battery, the traceability of the cobalt ethically source to create the battery. That's not very different from the beef farmer who's breeding his animal in Brendan to the supermarket. Again, very, very similar. And they had the same experiences. They've just iterated that out into obviously a commercially available product for Volvo and now for a lot more. And, and to say I'm sure Yus will speak about these. Again, from the farmer's point of view, it's there, there is there's certainly something there for you. I suppose just a little bit more of the learnings is that most people are on the journey, but collaboration is key. Working together, try, you know, talking to people. The technology is there, but it's about getting the technology to fit the need. It's not about using technology because of the sake of the technology is available. And I think, look, there's still questions arising for us. Um, and I've touched a little bit about why you would look at a centralized database versus using blockchain in the first place. And um, GDBR is, is a consideration, I think, and it's something that maybe we'll touch on later and somebody might touch on in terms of um, something gets put on the chain, can it be taken off? Well, no, and it's a, so I think it's just an interesting concept. I think that might be worth a discussion. Uh, the cost benefit, I think, is a conversation again, and maybe more people will touch on that today. And just the entire engagement again as to will people engage with the, the with, with, with blockchain? It's you having a chain and nobody else wanting to engage is 
not going to be a whole lot of benefit to the industry. So it's one that I think people need to, to look at. Bear that in mind, I suppose, be in finishing up in terms of farms of the future and where blockchain sits. You know, there's a huge amount of IoT. Yes, I think there's opportunities there. And, um, you know, if you look at the growth in IoT, 20% annually, blockchain from a traceability and from, from a consumer feedback point of view, I think we've shown is in the proof of concept, something that you can do. And again, building that into climate and environment, which again, sustainable farming, I think it's something that we've seen and look on the, on the project we did, very, very briefly touched at that idea as a proof of concept. So um, thank you very much. Apologies, um, Michelle, I'm probably slightly over time. Perfect, Carol. Thank you very much, Carol, for a very interesting talk. I'll be scanning all my stakes from now on. <laughs> so, does anyone have any questions from Carol? There's a question in the chat there, Michelle, from yeah. Brendan. So we've got some questions in the chat. So Brendan has asked, it's an excellent product for producers and consumers, and how is a relationship can be built? Do you see retailers as a critical next step? Um, I, I suppose this is part of, part of the challenge, Michelle, in terms of understanding yeah, people engaging. And it's, I think you, you do need to have the, the buy-in of, of the, the different pieces along the chain and, and supply chain management. I suppose that's not probably our area of expertise, as I said, in terms of we're, we're not in the supply chain per se. Um, I think it's something that is definitely, as an industry, I think Brendan touched on it. How does the industry approach this as opposed to just being one one unit or one person I think it's, it's what's the industry approach how, how does the industry think we, we could leverage this technology um, and from a you know if if it's happening as a as a as a, a, a supplier point of view and it's Brendan that's putting the barcode on you know does the supermarket I don't know I think it's something that definitely is a conversation um, but it, it is about buy-in from everybody as an industry and how can we use this to to improve the overall industry, not just one component of the industry. Okay, and we have another question then. So to scale this approach, is it possible to trace individual stakes through typical processing halls or will it only be at the batch level? Um, so in terms of this particular project, because we were working with MTI, the, the individual stakes are being, um, are being individually identified and barcoded. So uh, we were able to trace individually to that stake. Um, obviously, again, from a from a, a, a large scale operation, I think that's that's one of the challenges. And I know Donna would have spoken about this before. How do you create that connectivity between the individual stake? And that's something that at the at the slaughter hall may maybe uh, there's a refinement in the process. Or can we use the DNA? And um, because we have the DNA of the animal, we have the DNA of the stake. Is there a traceability link back there? So I think again, there, there's a lots of different conversations and, and opportunities there. It's about What's the art of the possible and starting that conversation, I think is what we were looking at. And I have a question myself. So you talked about different types of software. So in your opinion, what would be the best software for someone who wants to get started in this? Um, it's a great question. And again, I think what we found was we, we went in with the, the idea of, look, let's assume we don't have any background in any technology. Where do we start? We did start on the, on the AWS platform. Um, but we found the guys started to struggle and it, it was very easy for the first week. And after that, they started to get into a bit more difficulty. We moved to transition to the Arthur platform and the guys found that extremely useful uh, in terms of being that little bit easier to use. And we were able to produce uh, you know, a product in, in a much shorter period of time. Um, and that was working with a technology partner as well, which I think is, is advisable for people in terms of you know leverage that, that, that there's lots of good technology partners out there who can give you a little bit of advice to get you on the road. Um, and even if you talk, I'm sure, um, I know Yous is there from Oracle today, um, you know, does they, they, a lot of these companies have, have insight programs where they'll actually work with you for, for a project, they'll get you up and running, they'll give you, they'll give you some, some help and, and advice. So I think it's again, collaboration is, is probably the key that I would suggest in terms of we, you know, talk to people, work with people. And we found when you asked the question, they were more than happy to, to engage with you and to advise you and help you. Um, so we've one more question now. So any concerns with security or fraudulent tr transactions with this technology? Well, I suppose that's the whole, the whole point of blockchain is, is that that fact that you can, you know, it's, it's audible, it's mutable, it's, it's, you, you can, if it's permissioned, you can really lock it down, you can really control it. So blockchain is, I mean, it's it, cryptocurrency is the prime example, you know, that, that that's how it's done. So they've, 
if they were going to steal something and do a fraud, it's probably going to be with your money rather than with your, your stakes. So I think, you know, I think that's why it's a technology that has been proved. And I'm sure, again, there'll be lots of talks today on how that's, um, you know, that's well covered off.